what miracle were they looking for? They saw dangerous dimensions of God. But at the slightest opportunity, they bowed to bow. They committed adultery with Ashtaroth. That's why some of these people, I have no respect for what they say they have. You know what? If you stand on a platform once, you will know by which spirit it is powered. You will know. So that discussion that God was about to bring from his lips died instantly. Why? A car. And it was not up to 10 minutes. It was on Facebook. It was everywhere that a breakthrough had come. Who servant are you? You know those of us that God has called to preach the gospel in this age. See that man of God. Eh? Our calling is to truth. And if you don't like truth, there's nothing I can do. It's truth. And the thing that will save a generation is that you will pay attention to truth. So in becoming the Lord's servant, there is dedication. In becoming the Lord's servant, there is sanctification. Sanctification is the process of making something holy. All right? And you can find sanctification in verse 2. The Bible says that, and be ye not conformed to this world, but let God do what? Transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. I like this translation. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of the world. If you look at the music ministry in Nigeria today, eh, the mentors of our so-called worship ministers eh, are people in the world. I'm not saying all. Hmm? But if you see the way some carry themselves and do ministry, eh, what they call ministry, you will know that they are mentors of people in the world. One, one was saying somewhere that um, because they treated him, they didn't treat him very well for the meeting they invited him. He said, if not Davido, they bring, they feed one like this. Oh God, are you Davido? Eh? But he thinks he's That is the measurement for Christian worship ministry. We do not know that in your coming to Christ as a minister, there is a process of sanctification. And what God is doing in sanctification is making sure you are not joined to the customs, the traditions, the ethics, the ethos, the value system of the world. He's purging you of what it is that is worldly so that you can become an instrument that he can use. So there is a transformation. Sanctification begins when you get born again. It ends when you die. Are you with me? When you get born again, the process of sanctification begins and it will end when you die. So every one of us that are in church now, eh? We will go through the same process of sanctification. But at every point in our lives, the results will not be the same. Did you hear what I said? Everyone will go through the same process of sanctification. But at every point in our lives, the results will not be the same. What I mean by that is, as we are seated in church now, everybody, our levels of sanctification are different. Are you here? So, one brother is possible that the Lord has succeeded with him 90% in delivering his soul eh, from the uh, passions and the appetites of this world. Another brother, it will be that God has only succeeded 1%. But every one of us, when we come into the environment of the government of Jesus, part
part of the blocks of your instruction will include the requirements of sanctification. Okay, let's press it further. First Thessalonians 4. Begin at verse 1. Let's press it further. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of Lord Jesus to live how? As we have done what? We, you live this way already and we encourage you to do so. So there is a way to live that does what? Pleases God. That is who a servant is. As a minister, you have only one audience. Your audience is God. Your allegiance is to God first, not men. God first. All you need to do is read of the men that died. Died. Serving God. The people we call the Matthias. Go and check. The reason they could look death in the eye and embrace it is that their allegiance was fixed. Nothing in this world could sway them to the other side. One who has not become the servant of the Lord, he has a price in the market of destiny. Satan knows that you can be bought. Satan knows that you can be compromised. Do you know that in the military space, in things like espionage, where company, um, countries spy on one another, when they try to get intelligence information about their enemies and all of that, do you know that secret service agents, they can be compromised? Eh? You now have what is called a rogue agent. Or in some cases, you have a double agent. Originally American, but got into Russia, and the Russians found out that he had a price. There's something he wants that he feels that his home country cannot give him. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So they offer it to him, and he embraces it, and they say, okay, now, that's what they call turning. He has now been turned. So he will go back to his country like an American, but his heart is now with the Russian government. Hmm? That's how some ministers are. They claim to be in the service of the Lord, but their heart is driven by Satan's agenda. Why? They've been compromised. Satan found out that there's something you want and your home country will not allow. He knows you. He, he, you, you don't know Satan. Satan is a monitoring spirit. Hmm? He sees that when a sister passes you, you can't take eye off breast. He knows that you are, you are, there's a sickness. There's something, there's something that is afflicting you that you don't want to deal with. So what he will do is that he will dangle that compromise before you. Bro, you don't know the things we know. You don't know what we know. Huh? There are many that are preaching now. Eh? Large crowds. They come to this city, they will fill stadiums. Everywhere they go, they leave a testimony of immorality. Everywhere. They enter into a city, a young girl will pay for it. Ah, not second hand, not that the third person, person can't tell us. No. First hand. First hand. First hand information. People go and preach in places. In this our city, somebody has come to preach. The female protocol that was assigned to him, part of his ministration was to be servicing her. It was part of his ministration. And then when, he, when, he, when they finish, he will climb pulpit and move. Move. Have you not heard preachers say that it is when you finish preaching that when you move in the anointing, all of a sudden you will be feeling like you want to be with a woman. Or God, which anointing do you have? Huh? 
that when you finish moving for God, eh, the way your body responds is a desire for sexual immorality. So there are ministries now. I'm not telling you secondhand knowledge. There are things we cannot say because we love the body. Hmm? And we know that God is working a great work in his body. It's only a matter of time. And if he not balance here, eh, and we think we are all the same, eh, when we get to heaven, we go balance. This life must balance. Either here, we go balance. There are places now that part of the protocol package hmm, is that they know that once you have finished preaching and you move in the anointing, you need, you need a step-down transformer. Louvele <laughs> Kuva. A step-down. So when you finish preaching, part of the step-down will be delivered to you in the night. And then when you finish stepping down, you and your host will pretend as if nothing. The next day, the host will still give you a mic and say, a man of God. You know the problem? We think that ministry is a call to serve men. You see, it's not everybody that God can testify. I have found David, my not everybody. Now somebody will be thinking, eh, but, but David made mistakes. Yes. Eh? In his mistake, you will see the revelation of where David's heart was. Right? When he sinned with Bathsheba and allowed himself, notice the words I use, he allowed himself to descend into a place. How did his descent begin? He forgot who he was. Are you here? Yes, sir. Remember where we read, the Bible says that this warrior that God chose, that God raised amongst his people, he raised him a what? A warrior. David was a man of war. Hmm? Chosen by God to be king. Then the Bible says, when men who knew their identity as kings were in the battle fighting, a man bore the title but forgot his identity. Kings were at war. What was a king doing at home? You know that in your service delivery, you begin to get complacent with God. You begin to become familiar with God. And things that he put as restrictions on your life, you now begin to look at the other man. Bro, we are all in the process of sanctification. The results will not be the same. Because the other end of sanctification and, and dedication is the one consecration. Consecration is now your personal commitment to the instructions that God has given to you. Because with the instructions will come unique disciplines. So what you do in consecration is that you put limits on yourself so that in your dealings with God, you will look like what God has in mind. That's where the consecration comes. David decided that even though he was a king, he would stay at home that day. Say, ah, oh God, every day, 10 hours, every day, 10 hours. Small team, pastor has said, there's a body, there's a body, there's a body. Person, not go chop. <laughs> if they kill you with body like that, you for don't marry. You don't marry now, every day, body, body, body. I beg go. As crusade finish, I'm on holiday. Body in waiting. I cannot come and kill myself. Live <laughs> Nama. So he stood there. And the minute Satan saw that he had become complacent, can you imagine one day that a king decided not to go to where kings go? He saw what he should not have seen. 
Look at what Lemuel's mother told Lemuel. He said, do not give your strength. Ooh. I learned early that sexual immorality can make you useless. You don't know the way I run. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know the way I will never attempt to give Satan room. I know the consequence of that. It's not that God will not forgive me. He will forgive me. But it's the easiest way. Basil, eh? take it to Ghana. It's the easiest way to become useless. Useless. And you see, when we are saying useless, eh? we are not saying useless to men. Hmm? You can still be useful in the bank. You can count money. Immorality does not burn your fingers. In fact, you will count. Your speech will be very, <laughs> very thick. It doesn't affect your ability to count money. You will not commit immorality and suddenly find out that all your teeth are fall, falling from your mouth and you can't eat food. No. You will wear suit. In fact, when you shave, as you are entering church, you'll say, fine man or girl. I celebrate grace. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the agenda and in the matters of God, you are no longer qualified. God has taken you and put you in outer court ministry. You are in the outer court serving men. Men are healing you. Listen, see, see, the man, they lead prayer. Meanwhile, the journey God wanted you to take with him, he has put a limitation. For his eyes cannot behold iniquity. There is no room for intimate union. He's lost. And you see, on my contemplations on my bed this morning, I began to tell the Lord, Lord, you know when you called me, I caught covenant with you. I don't want to be a big man of God. You may not believe me, but when we die, I pray that the Lord will open my video, my heart, and show, show, show you. You will see. It's not an agenda in my program. You know what I want? I want to love God. I want to be intimate with him. I want to know him at a level that no mortal has known him. Even if I don't preach this gospel. Do you know the joy to walk out of your house and know things that men don't know? <laughs> that your life, you are living a reference that is divine. <laughs> Do you know what it means that God says, this is my man, this one. Satan can kill you. This one is my man. Then when God wants to gist with somebody, he will appear to you. There are many men in the earth. That is what it means to be chosen of the Lord. Chosen. I will do anything to have that thing. And God sees my heart. I will do anything. That is the journey that this my life is on. Not, not, not pulpit ministry. That's the journey I am on. You don't know how hard it is to do this thing I'm doing. You will beg God, beg God, beg God, beg Lord, I don't want to say what you are not saying. You know you, you listen to people who, who think that to speak before people is a thing of, of bogus pride. So are you the one preaching to this? Yes now. So there's a word. There is a word. When I preach, finish. Bob, they're going to say God, they talk now. You've not seen people that when they finish ministry, they will now, they will now call you and say, Kai, you hear with your drop? Say, Bob, check them now. As I enter that thing, 90 people shout, deep. <laughs> he said the word not be small 
So people prepare for message with punchline. Have you seen me go to my note? No. The way I preach, I preach from the spirit. And there's nothing wrong with preaching with notes. I write notes. Eh? This message, I could not write notes. It was a contempt. My wife will tell you, I was sitting on the toilet. I was still reading. She's here. Toilet. Oh. I don't know why the atmosphere of toilet is prophetic. <laughs> Is prophetic. If your your toilet has not become prophetic, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> Every true child of God, the bathroom and the toilet is prophetic. Is a zone for angels, angels, angels. I don't know why, you, but we will ask Jesus when we get to heaven. It's prophetic. You will just be taking shower. Ooh. and then you will dive it's a sweet experience somebody just, just love Jesus just love Jesus